Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. We are built for this. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. I don't think it would be entirely inaccurate to say that Honda's four-wheel off-road division has gone through something of a renaissance recently. It appears that gone are the days of introducing a new model that just squeaks by in terms of features and performance, then leaving that model nearly unchanged for decades. No, the new Honda is re-engaged and pushing hard. Last season, they gave us the Talon X and the Talon R, two side-by-sides that both feature a heavy dose of Honda DNA, setting them apart from the rest of the sport side-by-side -side marketplace. The X is shorter with a bit less travel from the rear three-link suspension. It's also narrower at 64 inches, so it can be ridden on a wider variety of trails most commonly found on the East Coast and in Canada. The R model is longer, has more rear end travel, and is wider for extra stability during high-speed wide open riding more common on the West Coast. The basic chassis of the two models are nearly identical, as are their interiors, which showcase Honda's focus on both the driver and the passenger's experience inside the vehicle. From front to back, the Talon oozes build quality and attention to detail that could only come from a highly experienced and highly respected automobile manufacturer. I'm not gonna lie, after all this, I fully expected Honda's 2020 new model intro to be nothing more than a showcase for new graphics and genuine Honda accessories, but I could not have been more wrong. For 2020, Honda has blown the lid off their sport side-by-side -side lineup by showcasing two more new models, both four-seaters and highlighting some aftermarket power upgrades. Further, they revealed three ATV models that have received some important and significant upgrades and a new special edition Pioneer model customers have been begging for. There's a lot of stuff to cover from Honda in 2020, so let's jump right in by taking a look at what's new in their ATV lineup, starting with the Rancher. The Rancher has always been sort of no frills, an entry-level workhorse for Honda, so to speak, focused much more on utility than recreation. So it's not surprising to see that the changes to the Rancher are far less exciting and much more functional than the other models. The two big talking points here are, number one, a new reverse actuation system that does away with the multiple steps previously required to go from forward to reverse and then back. A new lever is easy to reach with your finger and most importantly, the system now allows you to go directly from first gear into reverse and back. Something not previously doable on any Honda and something anyone who uses their ATV for things like plowing will greatly appreciate. The second update for the Rancher is a new ProConnect rack system that allows for easy installation and removal of accessories, and it's much in line with what's available from the competition. When we move over to the Foreman, we get a bit more exciting news. For 2020, the Foreman line gets a larger displacement 518cc engine that sees a boost in low-end and mid-range torque. I'm just going to say this out loud right now. Anytime Honda adds more power, that's a real good thing. All Foreman models get the new reverse and rack system found on the Rancher, and the Foreman base model gets the headlight previously only available on the Foreman Rubicon. The Foreman Rubicon, again, gets the racks and reverse system as well as the 518cc motor, but for 2020, it also gets a bit of a facelift with a new grill and bumper combo. Both Foreman models now feature a front-mounted under-rack waterproof storage bin that is accessible to the driver from the cockpit, though obviously not when the racks are loaded. The only news for Pioneer owners is something they've actually been asking for. The limited edition model will now be available in both 5-seat and 3-seat configurations instead of just the 5-seat from last season. Now switching gears to the sport side-by-side -side division, this is where the really big and most exciting news comes from. And again, it comes in not just one, but two distinct flavors. First up is the new Talon 1000 X4. It's based on the Talon 1000 X two seat model and utilizes the same front and rear suspension setups. In fact, the entire front and rear sections of the vehicle are identical to the two seater. An extra 28.8 inch section has been added to the chassis between the front and rear clips to make room for rear seating, but the seating in the rear is not your typical four seater sport side-by-side -side stuff. Like they did when designing the two-seat Talon, Honda engineers took a lot of time to consider just how passengers fit inside a side-by-side -side when they designed the four-seat model. They determined that rear passengers would be more comfortable with more stadium-style seating, so the rear seats on the X4 Talon sit higher than the front to give the backseat passengers a better view of the trail. The rear seats also sit closer together. This gives the rear seat passengers the ability to see not only above, but also in between the front occupants. 
It's a smart layout that has the added benefit of additional legroom for rear seat passengers, making the rear of the X4 Talon one of the most comfortable side-by-side -side back seats in the business. The rest of the Talon 1000 X4 is standard Talon stuff. 15 inches of travel front and rear damped by a set of Fox Podium 2.0s up front and 2.5s in the rear. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Power Sports, race-inspired performance. The second four-seat Talon model Honda unveiled for 2020 really caught me off guard. It's something that just wasn't even on my radar when I walked into the presentation. For the 2020 model year, Honda has partnered with both Fox and Bosch to bring us the Talon 1000 X4 Fox Live Valve Edition. Now, if you're thinking, hey, I've seen this somewhere else before, you're thinking exactly what I was thinking. Fox Live Valve suspension uses upwards of eight sensors located all over the vehicle to monitor almost every aspect of the vehicle and how it's being driven. This information is processed through a Bosch programmed control unit that adjusts each shock individually in a matter of milliseconds to best suit whatever driving scenario the vehicle is currently in based on which of the two modes selected via dash mounted switch the driver chose. If you're accelerating, it stiffens the rear shocks. If you're braking, it stiffens the front shocks. If you're turning left, it stiffens both of the right-hand shocks, the front more than the rear. And if you're jumping, it knows this and will stiffen all four shocks to maximum to help avoid bottoming. But these are just a few of the scenarios. The live valve system is constantly adjusting the shocks. And if you're wondering if this type of technology is just a gimmick or if it's actually worthwhile, let me tell you right now, this is not a gimmick. I'm sure you, like me, are drawing an immediate parallel to Polaris's dynamic system. And while they are very similar, there is one thing that sets the dynamic system apart from the live valve system found on the Talon. Dynamics uses a Polaris designed and programmed control unit. The Talon's live valve system uses a controller programmed by Bosch. Is one better than the other? Only time will tell. Two other notable differences between the Base X4 and the Live Valve Edition are first and most obviously the Fox Orange chassis and roll cage found on the Live Valve Edition. It does need to be said though, this is not just the roll cage. The entire chassis and all chassis components have been coated in Honda's proprietary dipping and powder coating process. To say it looks rad would be a gross understatement. The final difference is the live valve model includes Honda's new launch control system, which is actuated by a combination of holding a dash switch, holding the levers, and holding the brake. It's all in the manual if you need to know how to use it. What's important is that it actually works. After the sheets were pulled off both the Talon X4 models, I assumed the news for 2020 was over. But Honda had one more Talon-related item to show us, and it may just be the biggest news of all. Aftermarket Honda performance supplier Jackson Racing has developed a fully integrated and bolt-on turbo kit for any Talon model that boosts power by a claimed 60%. My math says that bumps the Talon's horsepower output to somewhere right around 170 ponies, which is more than respectable, and I can say from experience, it wakes the Talon up in a big way. Jackson Racing is known in Honda automotive circles as the go-to place for Honda performance parts because they think bigger than just adding more horsepower. They're all about creating performance parts that integrate seamlessly into the vehicle on all levels. In the case of the Talon, the Jackson Racing Turbo Kit includes an ECU that changes not just the engine mapping, but also optimizes all the auto shift points on the DC2 transmission to work more efficiently with the increased horsepower. After spending a bit of time going back and forth between a stock Talon and a Jackson Racing Turbo equipped Talon, I can say absolutely the difference is drastic. It pulls harder everywhere in its power curve, but the mid-range hit is explosive. I found I preferred using the manual shift mode, but most of the Honda engineers have said that after you get used to it, the auto DCT setting is actually the fastest. The final two points I think are important about the Jackson Turbo Kit are first, it doesn't void your Honda warranty, which I think should be an important concern for anybody buying a new Talon. And second, it's a 100% bolt-on kit Zero modifications or cutting of any kind are necessary. Jackson Racing claims anyone who's mechanically inclined can install it themselves with typical hand tools in about six to eight hours. And a shop who's done a few should be able to do it in under four. On that same note, the Jackson kit is 100% removable and the vehicle can be put back to stock with no negative side effects. So if you ever decide to sell your Talon, you can take the turbo kit off and keep it for your next one. 
So that's the big news from Honda for 2020. For the second year in a row, we've been given more than we either expected or asked for, and the idea that Honda is on a mission has been further solidified in my mind. It truly is refreshing to see Honda on such a roll, but of course, we're never completely satisfied. So the only question I think that remains to be answered is simply this, what's next? Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Shock Strap, Start Strapped, Stay Strapped. Tires are something that we talk about a lot around here, and I guess that's because without them, we're not going anywhere. But when it comes down to it, there's a lot of brand choices and even more tires to choose from. And ITP is known for their continual evolution and innovation in the industry. They're constantly bringing new products to market and have had an almost cult-like following since the early days of the first mud lights that really set the framework for aggressive ATV tires. Today I'm bringing you yet another new offering from ITP, but it's unique in its focus. Why is it unique, you might ask? Well, a lot of tires try to be a jack of all trades instead of focusing on doing one thing really well. But when it comes to the ITP Terra Hook, it's focused on just one thing. And that one thing is ultimate high performance trail riding. Designed with an eight ply radio construction, the Terra Hook is confident at speed and built for puncture resistant abuse from anything that your big horsepower side by side can throw at it. It features multi angled, non directional channeled lugs for ultimate grip and the stuff that we encounter on the trails every single day rocks, roots, clay, and fallen tree limbs. Now to test the Terra Hook out proper, we didn't go with some big 72 inch wide desert buggy because let's face it, they're not as good on the trail as, let's say, this Maverick Trail 1000 DPS. And the Maverick Trail is a true trail dominating beast, and it's sure to provide the platform that shows off just how capable the Terra Hooks are. Currently, we have the stock 26 inch tires on, but for maximum ground clearance and optimum rolling resistance over trail obstacles, I'm gonna go to a square tire setup at 30 inches tall, 10 inches wide on a 14 inch Storm Series Twister directional rim. There's no doubt that this combination looks great and the directional pattern of the rim definitely adds style, but while style is good, ultimately what we're looking for is the best fit and function. The Terra Hook is available in nine sizes from 26 all the way up to 32s. While the 30s we're running today sit nicely on this Maverick trail, they are certainly delivering on the claims of trail performance. And the grip is especially noticeable in hard cornering when the vehicle is looking for maximum traction to resist sliding. The tire doesn't flex much because of the eight ply construction with reinforced belts, but when the sidewall does squat, the alternating shoulder tread blocks lock into the earth and give you that confident and really hooked up feeling. Acceleration out of the corner and grip on uphill on throttle climbs is big. There really is no shortage of earth chewing traction here. Now all of this is great, but what about the average trail cruising speed ride of the tires? The Terra Hook's balance tread to void ratio optimizes the amount of tread in contact with the surface to the open tread space needed to properly drain water and shed loose soupy mud. The result is a tire setup that doesn't dance on the terrain nor feel choppy. They roll efficiently and smoothly along with effectively shedding water from beneath the tread. This is noticeable when you're riding over hard, wet surfaces like compacted dirt or flat rock. And it's evident not just from the feel through the chassis into the seat, but also through the steering wheel, where you really don't feel any vibrations, chop, or unnerving slippage. And surprisingly, over a long day's ride, the smoothness will actually allow you to ride with much less fatigue as compared to an aggressive tire with a higher or lower tread to void ratio. And when you're logging big miles, running high speeds, and just overall enjoying your day out on the trails, the last thing that you should worry about is your tire and wheel setup. And ITP stands behind their products. Heck, the Twister rims are covered by a lifetime structural warranty, and that's something that few brands will provide. When you're putting your money into new tires or upgrading to a complete tire and rim package for both looks and performance, you want to know that it's with a brand that's not just pumping out anything. ITP knows tires, tread wear, durability, and performance, and they're dedicated to delivering on all of those fronts, as we've seen firsthand for many years. They continue to push the industry with innovations and innovative wheel and tire designs. And when it comes to the aggressive trail rider looking for ultimate trail performance, I can say from firsthand experience as you've witnessed today that the Terra Hook delivers on what it claims. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Argo. Go anywhere. On this week's test ride, we're going to shift the Dirt Tracks paradigm. We've enlisted a couple who can best be described as gearheads to deliver the opinion and impressions you've come to expect from Luke, AJ, and myself. This time around, it isn't what we think, it's about what real off-roaders experience.
let me introduce our newest husband and wife test rider team, Paul Godin and Tina Dirksen. I think the interest in the side-by-side, -side, when you look at that in combination with the fact that we're restoring old cars, plus, you know, we run an automotive repair shop, one feeds into the other. And so, you know, it's an opportunity to get out to experience new types of vehicles. Our off-road activities mostly include snowmobiling with myself and my wife, Tina. My interest in all other motorsports, including uh, old cars and, and boats and snowmobiles, is definitely has a bearing on my interest in side-by-sides. I believe that motorsports is a family-friendly activity, and so I think it's a great opportunity to get out, get some fresh air, and do something together outside of, you know, their normal day-to-day -day activities. What I like most about the Maverick Trail 1000 is that it's small and nimble. It had enough power to get going, and then when you're in the corners, it really hugged tight and it didn't feel like you were gonna lose control. You know, I like the way it handled and I like the conciseness and the agility of it. I also liked the interior part of it as well. I felt well put together. You didn't have to spend time looking around for instruments. Everything was right in a place where it would seem to be natural. Finding the control, Operating the vehicle, I found that it was responsive, it was nimble, it had more power than, than you know you could ask for. You don't feel tippy at all, which no. is nice. And, and it just, the interior is comfortable, the seats are comfortable. It's very natural, you don't really have to hunt around for no. anything, everything is in the right place. There was no issue with getting familiar with the machine at all. I felt that the Maverick Trail suspension wasn't losing it in the corner, it wasn't coming out from under me and it was really tight. I felt on some of the rocky areas, it just took up the suspension and you didn't really feel like it was digging in too deep. So I, I felt it had uh, really good suspension all around. As far as front to rear, there's no uh, kicking out of the rear end or anything like that. So it all works uh, in tandem. I would rate the ergonomics in and the comfort in the Maverick to be quite good. I felt the seat really fitted well around my body. You no, know, I don't have the longest legs, but I felt the seat was adequately adjustable, so I, I was in control of the uh, gas pedal and the brakes as well. The layout on the dash and the steering wheel, it was nice that it had tilt steering, because so I could bring it down to an, a level that I felt was comfortable. The 50 inch width for our intended use is very important. As these vehicles become more popular, they're going to be on more of the trails. The wider vehicles are somewhat not suitable for some of the trails. This will make accessing trails way easier for most people and uh, safer for that, for that matter. When I think about the horsepower of the vehicle, I would definitely go with the 1000. Again, it's responsive. I would, I would be concerned by going down to the lesser horsepower that you know, you don't have quite the responsiveness. If you need extra torque to get out of a situation, it may not be there. And so, personally speaking, I would go with the 1000. As a snowmobile owner of, of a high horsepower snowmobile, I felt I wouldn't want to go down in power in it. I love the performance of it, and it did everything that I asked it to do. I would say there's value in getting the power steering. When I think of the handling and the drivetrain and the suspension, it's all a package. I would suspect that part of the reason why it handles as well as it does, why it's so responsive is, is everything is feeding in, including the power steering. So I, I would believe that it would be a value add, definitely. My feeling about the Can-Am brand is strongly influenced by the fact that we ride skidoos in the wintertime. But knowing the people that we've always dealt with who also carry the Can-Am products, it seems to be a brand that's very loyal to their customers and also proactive in research and development to make sure that they're at the forefront of the market. Uh, the Can-Am brand, in my opinion, gives good value and aftermarket support or after-service sales support and resale value when you're ready to move up to a newer unit. I believe that Can-Am represents quality and after-sales support and value as well. There are many different price points across any type of off-road vehicle. And I think what it boils down to with respect to value is a person needs to decide what's important to them. And, you know, there could be pros and cons from each one of the manufacturers. But as far as Can-Am specifically, I do believe that they offer good value, a good range of products. And, you know, the, the aftermarket or the after-purchase support uh, is quite strong as well. 
Hopefully, you found Paul and Tina's opinions of the 2019 Can-Am Maverick Trail DPS 1000 helpful. Having real riders state their opinions is good for us here at Dirt Tracks. It's too easy when you drive and ride virtually every new off-road vehicle on a regular basis to take for granted what real buyers and real owners want to know and what they appreciate about their rides. We learned a lot, and we hope you did too. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, we are built for this. And by Arctic Cat. Thanks for watching this Dirt Tracks segment. Make sure you hit the subscribe button where you can watch pretty much anything related to ATV and side-by-sides.